Hello and welcome to The Daily Oz. I'm Billy. I'm Zara. This week, X was banned in Brazil due to a Supreme Court decision over what can and can't be said online. It is the latest in a string of lawsuits and bad news engulfing X, although X itself paints a very different picture. So, about two years on from when billionaire Elon Musk took over the ownership of X, what is happening to it and what does its future look like? We will tell you what you need to know in today's episode. Okay, Billy, so every so often we talk about a different social media platform. Today we are doing an entire deep dive dedicated to X. You said in the intro that this week X was banned in Brazil, so I presume that is the news hook on which this episode is based. Can you just run me through what happened there? Yeah, so we're talking about X, which every time that we have covered X recently, we always clarify that it was previously known as Twitter. Still call it that. (laughs) Yes. It's hard to stop calling it that, but I think we can probably stop saying that now. It's been Mm. about two years since Elon Musk took it over and about a year since we started calling it X. So on Saturday night at midnight in Brazil, users of X could no longer access the app on their phones. Mm. And now in terms of the impact that this has on Brazil's population, it's actually X's fifth largest international market Wow! with about 20 million users there. Okay, so just overnight, those users could no longer access the app itself. Exactly. And this decision was made by the country's Supreme Court. And it followed months of negotiations and disagreements and back and forth between Brazilian authorities and Elon Musk, who, as we said, he is the owner now Mm -hmm. of X. He's not the CEO. Um, He gave that to another person once he took it over, but he is still the owner and is still heavily involved. Sorry, just to clarify, he gave it to another person after putting it to a vote yes. and saying, if you vote, I will step down as CEO. And that is what happened. Yes, he used the poll feature on X. <laughs> and so essentially the parties were disagreeing over misinformation on the platform. And basically Musk was refusing to comply with court orders for X to remove certain content. I think that this is one of the interesting examples of when multinational companies, so companies that have their headquarters in one country but operate in so many, uh, how they have to still obviously obey domestic law. And in Brazil, this has seemingly reached boiling point. What happened to get us to here? Yeah, exactly. And I think what's interesting is that when Elon Musk took X over, one of the key reasons he said he wanted to own it was because of free speech. And Mm -hmm. as we know, in the US, freedom of speech is a constitutionally enshrined right. But in other countries, for example, in Australia, that's not a constitutionally enshrined right. And what's interesting here is the base country that your company starts in doesn't necessarily have the same laws as the other countries that you might expand into. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I mean, I think that it's particularly significant when it comes to social media companies because, Mm. as you say, they really rub up against so many parts of the law. Run me through what parts of the law we're talking about when it comes to Brazil. Why did this happen? So this is all about free speech. Okay. And more specifically, it's about political mis- and disinformation. Do you want to quickly just clarify those two? Yeah. So misinformation is false information that is spread regardless of what the intent was. And Mm -hmm. then disinformation is also false information that was spread, but with the specific intent of it being fake news or false information. Yeah. Okay. And so we're talking about both of those issues today. Give me a bit of background when it comes to Brazil. So the story kind of starts in October 2022, which is actually when Elon Musk took X over, Mm -hmm. but it's also when there was an election in Brazil and far-right leader Jair Bolsonaro lost to Brazil's now president, Lula da Silva, who is considered more left. Now, following that vote, Bolsonaro supporters led riots across Brazil, which you might remember, and it was an extremely tumultuous time for the country. Now, since the fallout of this election, Brazilian authorities have really intensified their efforts to combat online right-wing content and, like I said, misinformation and disinformation that is spreading on social media, including X. 
And so the election was in 2022 and you say that's when the story begun, but what's happened between then and now? Why are we now only hearing about X being taken offline in Brazil? Yeah, so it's kind of been taking place over the last few months, which you might have seen some articles about, but it's really intensified this past week. I'll take you through a quick timeline. There have been lots of different twists and turns in this story, and so I'm just going to take you through some of the key moments Mm -hmm. at a really top level. So in April, Brazil's Supreme Court Judge Alexander de Moraes issued an order to X requiring it to suspend dozens of accounts for allegedly spreading dis information. Now, these are accounts that the judge said was spreading content that threatens Brazil's democracy. And we know that many of these accounts belong to supporters of the former right-wing president, Jair Bolsonaro, who I was just talking about, who lost the election. Now, X didn't ultimately comply with that order. Initially, Elon Musk said that they would comply, but ultimately they didn't. And Musk actually announced in August that X would close its office in Brazil as a result of the orders. Mm -hmm. Now, remember that just because you close the office doesn't mean that the actual app closes down. So the platform was still operating, but they had closed the office. And he has consistently criticised the judge's orders. He's called it censorship and you know, he's used X to consistently say that Mm. he strongly disagrees with these orders. Then last week, the Supreme Court ordered that X's platform be suspended in the country altogether because of its continued non-compliance with the orders. So let's just recap that. In April of this year, the Brazilian Supreme Court said that X had to do XYZ, which included Mm -hmm. taking a whole bunch of accounts offline, which they believed was spreading disinformation information. Elon Musk ultimately refused to do that as the owner of the app. And then last week, the Supreme Court ordered that X's platform be suspended altogether. Exactly. Okay. And they said that the platform should be suspended until, quote, all court orders are complied with, fines are duly paid, and a new legal representative for the company is appointed in the country. Now, the legal representative mentioned there just some quick context. Essentially, last month, the judge threatened X's legal representative with arrest, and that led that legal representative to resign. And now the company doesn't have a legal representative in Brazil, or at least hasn't named one. And that is another one of the key aspects that Brazil's Supreme Court has a huge issue with and what led them to suspend the platform in the country. Also, another Quick bit of context, this all comes ahead of local elections in Brazil in October when about 150 million people will be heading to the polls. I think that that's... um The point about the legal representative is really interesting and, again, seems to be a characteristic of this fight the governments are having with big tech because so many of them, as you have said, are headquartered overseas Mm. and then don't have people on the ground so that if there is this issue with local authorities, it's quite difficult for them to find someone to engage with. So Mm. that's a really interesting element. It seems like there is a lot going on when it comes to Brazil. You said there's an election coming up and there's been this to and fro between the Supreme Court and Elon Musk. What's the fallout been? Well, Musk has been obviously extremely critical of the decision. He has tweeted many, many times. I also don't know if we can say tweet anymore. Yeah. He X. X'd. Yeah. Doesn't quite <laughs> um, have the same ring to it. One of his statements said, quote, free speech is the bedrock of democracy and an unelected pseudo judge in Brazil is destroying it for political purposes. So he's basically saying that the judge is making all of these decisions based on his own politics mm. and that it's not legal. Mm. He also called the ban illegal political censorship by an evil dictator cosplaying as a judge. So not mincing his words (laughs) there. On the other hand, there is Brazil's president who supports the decision. He has urged Musk to, quote, accept the country's rules and respect the Supreme Court's decision. And I mean, there are these political undertones to it. Like you said, that those accounts were connected with the former president. We now have someone on the opposite side of politics who is in power in Brazil. So I'm sure there's a fair bit of tension there. Yeah, at the risk of complete oversimplification, I think it's fair to say that the judge is basically seen as a hero to the left Mm. and is seen as making a really evil decision Mm, by by the the right. right. Yeah. 
Um, Just one more quote from the current president of Brazil, Lula da Silva. He also said about Musk, quote, just because he has money doesn't mean he can do whatever he wants. The whole time while you've been talking about this, I've been thinking about the fact that uh, this is not by any means the first, second or third time we have spoken (laughs) about X on this podcast. And here in Australia, there have been some tensions with the social media app and regulatory kind of oversight. Can you take us through what Elon Musk is dealing with around the rest of the world? Because it isn't just contained to Brazil. Yeah. And in Australia is one of the other most famous examples Mm. where there has been a really high profile legal challenge to Musk and it was over the same thing. It was over free speech. Mm. So you might remember earlier this year, Australia's own e-safety commissioner sued X for not complying with a court order. So the commissioner ordered X to take down footage of a stabbing in Sydney, which X again refused to do due to free speech. Mm. Now X argued at the time that, quote, global takedown orders go against the very principle of a free and open internet and threaten free speech everywhere. I feel like you could probably control C, control V that <laughs> that quote and put it into yeah. the current context of what they're dealing yeah. with. Now, that case was actually then dropped by the e-safety commissioner, so it's not ongoing, but does show that, you know, again, free speech is one of the key values at the centre of this new era of X under Elon Musk. And it's really interesting how that translates around the world, not just in the US, where, Mm. again, it's a constitutionally enshrined right. Mm. I think that anyone that uses X, and I count myself in that category, has... more of a silent user, though. I know. I just... I lurk. I'm such a sleuth on X. Um, (laughs) But it has changed quite dramatically. Like there has been a very, very consistent and obvious transformation of the app since Elon Musk took over. You know, the blue ticks are one thing, but you can very clearly see that there is a lot of mis and disinformation on the app. And Elon Musk himself is suggesting that that is, you know, the bedrock of free speech. Can you just walk me through what's happened since he took over the app, just in, I guess, a bird's eye sense? Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, you and I have both used Twitter over the years or X over the years, and it does feel like there have been a lot of changes. And, Mm. you know, personally, I don't really tweet anymore or Mm. go on it anymore. Um, But it's hard to know if that's just a you thing or if there's this big shift globally. So just to recap, Musk bought X in 2022. When he bought the social media app, it was obviously called Twitter, as we've gone through, and he bought it for $44 billion. Mm -hmm. Now, when he took it over, there was just under 8,000 people who worked at the company. In the year after he took over, that went down to 1,500, which is about an 80% cut of their workforce. Mm. Some of them were fired, some of them quit. And that stat came from a BBC interview with Elon Musk. So those are his own words. Now, X's valuation has also gone down. Valuation meaning how much it's worth. How much the company is worth. So two years ago, like I said, it was worth $44 billion, although Musk has repeatedly suggested that he overpaid for the platform. But it is now widely estimated to be valued at about half of that. Mm. So that's about $20 billion wiped from its valuation. I mean, I guess you also just have to then take in to consideration if he's saying he overpaid for it. Evaluation mm. is only as much as someone will pay for it. So until the next sale goes through, it will be difficult to know yeah. what that looks like. But clearly there's a general understanding that mm. it's not worth as much today as it was yep. two years ago. Now, beyond the financials, we know that the spread of misinformation has increased significantly since Musk took over. Last year, actually, the European Union issued a warning saying that X is the biggest source of mis- and disinformation across the EU. Wow. We also know that advertisers have stepped away from X. In fact, X last month sued a group of advertisers for allegedly orchestrating a massive boycott, which it says deprived the company of billions in advertiser Mm. revenue. The next stat I looked at is traffic to the website. Now, there are conflicting reports on this. 
one report by digital intelligence firm Similar Web, they reported that traffic was down 14% in October last year. So that was one year since Musk had bought it. However, Musk himself has been saying that they have been seeing record high usage recently. Whichever way you look at it, I think it's fair to say that it has been a very tumultuous time for X. Maybe that's something that's always going to happen when a company comes under new ownership. But this is something that's happening on a really global stage. Mm. And, you know, it just feels like there's legal fight after legal fight Mm. at the moment. The title of this podcast is, is it the beginning of the end for X? It's hard to say, but I'm sure Elon Musk definitely has his fair share of legal challenges ahead of him. That he does. Billy, thank you for taking us through that and making sense of what I see on X every single day, which (laughs) is uh, an interesting array of content. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Daily Oz. To help us grow, we would love it if you could hit follow on Spotify or Apple, or if you're watching us on YouTube, you can subscribe there too. We will be back again tomorrow for another episode of The Daily Oz. But until then, have a great Wednesday.